Hello, welcome to Ventura County Farmer of the Month and today I'm in beautiful Moore Park at Underwood Family Farms and I'm here to interview one of the more famous farmers in Ventura County, Craig Underwood. And I'm so happy to finally meet you. I've heard so many wonderful things about you, Craig, and uh, it's really great to meet you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the history of Underwood Family Farms and your family connections to the farm? Well, Under, Underwood Family Farms started probably in 1980 because that's when we opened our produce stand in Somos. And um, from there it grew to um, the produce stand in Somos, our stand here. And um, we started farming here in 1994. And um, it evolved from there and it came about probably because we were struggling with conventional farming at the, in the 80s. 80s were a very difficult time for farmers. And, why was it? Why was it difficult? Well, prices were low. Uh, the cost of uh, financing was very high. Uh, we were not making money for a long period of time there. A lot of farmers went out of business. We had to uh, we had to cut back and change the style of farming that we were doing. So one of our choices was to direct market to the public. And we thought, um, you know, here in Ventura County, where you know, we have so many fresh fruits and vegetables year-round, it was sad to see what was being offered in the stores. That all has changed because now there's, you know, a nice selection of fresh fruits and vegetables in the stores. But we thought, you know, we should be, we should be offering to the public the quality that's here. You wanted to go direct and offer local, locally grown Ventura County fruits and vegetables. How many acres of land do you farm? Well, our total farming operation is about 1,800 acres. What we farm on this farm right here is about 130. Okay. And, and what crops do you grow? I mean, I know it changes, obviously, with the season. Right now, what crops are you growing, or what are your more popular crops? Yeah. On this, this farm, where we market directly to the public, we grow just about everything. And um, we're getting ready for our festival in October when we have a lot of people come out. Uh, people come out for picking their own vegetables here. Our main crop on our larger acreage is jalapeno peppers that we grow for Hui Fong Foods. And we grow a thousand acres of jalapenos for them. Oh, a thousand acres, and that's your most popular crop, okay. And you said something about your October festival. What, what happens out here in October? I'm sure pumpkins are part of it all. Pumpkins are part of it. Uh, we have themed weekend. The very first weekend is uh, public safety weekend, and the fire department and the police department bring out all kinds of equipment for the public to come and, and uh, touch and play with. Um, you know, we've done a pumpkin drop from the top of a ladder truck 100 feet up. Uh, they're out here with their uh, SWAT, you know, SWAT vehicle and their bomb robot. So it's a lot of fun. We have a tractor weekend, bluegrass weekend, um, all about pumpkins, uh, Western Heritage weekend. Every weekend has a theme to it. In the month of October? In the month of October, right. Okay. Right. So if kids want to come out and pick their own pumpkin with their parents, that they can start doing that at the beginning of October. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And we have a lot of school tours that come out in October. Okay. Yeah, that's when the schools... Now, can you tell me a little bit about the school tours that you offer? Um, do they come out in the morning and they stay for a good part of the day and they pick their own... Is it a, is it a, is it a set program and, and is it educational as well? It is. There, there are uh, two seasons for our school tours. The springtime season, uh, the schools come out. We have a classroom session to begin with. They get a wagon ride out to the field, and they'll either pick strawberries or vegetables. They can fill a bag full of vegetables. Then they come back in and, and have a snack in, in the area that we have in the back here. And then in the fall, they come out and do a similar thing. There's a classroom uh, presentation, or they can just go out to the field right away. We give a little tour around the farm, and then they can pick their own pumpkin and hang out in the animal center. That's really wonderful. And I know that a lot of Ventura County kids come out, but I, my understanding is is that you have a lot of children, school children, come out from Los Angeles County that might never have seen a farm before or have never picked their own fruit or vegetables. Does, how does that make you feel knowing that? Well, it's very satisfying. You know, I, I probably get a great deal of pleasure out of this farm more than any other part of our farming operation because 
Uh, it's fun to educate the kids and see the experience they have out here. And the LA Unified School District is out here a lot with kids. Mm -hmm. So we're very close to the San Fernando Valley and uh, we have a very large market people who are in the city. Yeah, I know how that is because I take uh, kids on field trips as well and it is so gratifying when they pick their own fruit or vegetable and they get to, um, they get so excited by it. They really, really, and their faces light up and it keeps you, re it keeps you, um, you know, enthusiastic too, because once you see them and how happy they are. Right. Um, we're standing in front of some draft horses and you said, you asked, you said, can we stand in front of the draft horses because I'm very partial to them. Why are you so partial to, to your draft horses? Well, they're just big, friendly guys. And, um, you know, I, I drive them around the farm to give tours. And uh, they just have great personalities. Mm -hmm. For a horse that big to be as gentle and friendly as they are, it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's very old school as well because um, we know farmers um, through history have used draft horses or oxen and uh, it brings you back to that time because farming has also become very high tech these days and very state of the art. So I imagine um, it's nice to drive those around the farm. Anything else we should know about Underwood Family Farms? Do you have any relatives that work here with you? or My, my daughter works with us on this farm. Um, you know, we have some great people that manage both both sides of the uh, farm, the the larger jalapeno growing side and, and this farm here. You know, great people. They've been here for 20, 25 years. So... Because farming, no one can do that on their own. It's definitely a family effort, a team effort. So you're saying that your, um, your team has been here for 20 years. That says something about you. Well, <clears throat> not everybody's been here 25 years, but... We are getting to be an older group because uh, so many people have been here a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. The older you get, the better you get. Well, thank you, Mr. Underwood, for being my Farmer of the Month, and thank you, Ventura County. Hi, Craig. Now we're standing in front of this uh, old combine machine and um, which doubles as a slide for yes. school children and children and um, you were saying that some of the new combines and new farm equipment actually has GPS devices tracking devices on them can you tell us a little bit about that because that was an interesting uh, little story you just told us yeah we do all of our groundwork with uh, GPS equipment on the tractor so it keeps uh, keeps the drivers going very straight when they make a turn they hit a button and then the GPS takes over and drives the tractor for them. <clears throat> and as a result, they can adjust within inches of where they, their last pass was so there's no waste. And then when we make beds to uh, plant the crop, put, lay the tape, the irrigation tape, the GPS um, makes the beds perfectly straight and uh, they line up as they go across the field so that when we're irrigating, we're doing our cultivating, um, everything is very precise. And when we're cultivating, we use an electronic eye to keep the cultivator centered over the rows. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And you also mentioned that farming is becoming so high tech that there's a computer on the farm equipment that tells you also which part of the, um, the acre is producing the most yield, the most crop. That's also the case as well? We're not doing that, but certainly in the Midwest, uh, I'm sure most of the larger farms there use that type of technology so they can monitor the production as they go through their fields. And uh, in that way, they can uh, apply the proper amount of nutrients the next year for the next crop. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And also, you were t talking and saying that the jalapeno pepper that you grow, that's your number one crop, mm -hmm. and it is a top Ventura County crop. Peppers are a top Ventura County crop, and I'm sure that your farm has something to do with it. Now, how many acres are you producing of um, peppers? We're, we're growing a thousand acres of jalapenos. A thousand, a thousand acres, and can you tell us about the story of, of uh, how you started growing those peppers? We grow them all for Hui Fong Foods, which is located uh, currently in Rosemead, and they're moving to Irwindale. But uh, David Tran, who's the owner of the company, came over here about um, probably 30 years ago, 
and uh, he left Vietnam when the uh, Chinese were basically uh, pushed out, their assets were confiscated, and he came over on a boat called Hui Fong, mm -hmm. and uh, started out, and we grew 50 acres for him about 20 years ago, and now we're growing 1,000, and uh, it's, uh, it was named the ingredient of the year uh, in Bon Appetit, and on NPR I heard them mention that uh, it's going to become the new American ketchup. Oh, interesting. Well, I always put Tabasco sauce in my ketchup to spice it up, and jalapenos, yes, they definitely add some flavor to your food, and they're also really nutritious. Peppers have um, more vitamin C than strawberries, and they help your circulation as well, so eat your peppers and get them from Underwood Family Farms. Well, next and time, Next time, instead of Tabasco, you should use Hui Fong sriracha sauce. Sriracha sauce. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Hi, Craig. Now we're standing in front of this uh, old combine machine, and um, which doubles as a slide for yes. school children and children. And um, you were saying that some of the new combines and new farm equipment actually has GPS devices, tracking devices on them. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that was an interesting uh, little story you just told us. Yeah, we do all of our groundwork with uh, GPS equipment on the tractors, so. It keeps, uh, keeps the drivers going very straight. When they make a turn, they hit a button, and then the GPS takes over and drives the tractor for them. <clears throat> and as a result, they can adjust within inches of where they, their last pass was, so there's no waste. And then when we make beds to uh, plant the crop, put, lay the tape, the irrigation tape, the GPS um, makes the beds perfectly straight, and uh, they line up as they go across the field so that when we're irrigating, we're doing our cultivating, um, everything is very precise, and when we're cultivating, we use an electronic eye to keep the cultivator centered over the rows. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And you also mentioned that farming is becoming so high-tech that there's a computer on the farm equipment that tells you also which part of the, um, the acre is producing the most yield, the most crop. That's also the case as well? We're not doing that, but certainly in the Midwest, uh, I'm sure most of the larger farms there use that type of technology so they can monitor the production as they go through their fields. And uh, in that way, they can uh, apply the proper amount of nutrients the next year for the next crop. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And also, you were t talking and saying that the jalapeno pepper that you grow, that's your number one crop, mm -hmm. and it is a top Ventura County crop. Peppers are a top Ventura County crop, and I'm sure that your farm has something to do with it. Now, how many acres are you producing of um, peppers? We're growing 1,000 acres of jalapenos. 1,000 a a thousand acres, and can you tell us about the story of, of uh, how you started growing those peppers? We grow them all for Hui Fong Foods, which is located uh, currently in Rosemead, and they're moving to Irwindale. But uh, David Tran, who's the owner of the company, came over here about um, probably 30 years ago. And uh, he left Vietnam when the uh, Chinese were basically uh, pushed out. Their assets were confiscated, and he came over on a boat called Hui Fong and uh, started out and we grew 50 acres for him about 20 years ago and now we're growing a thousand and uh, it's uh, it was named the ingredient of the year uh, in Bon Appetit and on NPR I heard them mention that uh, it's going to become the new American ketchup. Oh interesting well I always put Tabasco sauce in my ketchup to spice it up and jalapenos yes they definitely add some flavor to your food and they're also really nutritious. Peppers have um, more vitamin C than strawberries and they help your circulation as well so eat your peppers and get them from Underwood Family Farms. Well, next and time, Next time instead of Tabasco you should use Hui Fong sriracha sauce. Sriracha sauce okay I'll do that. Thank you Craig. Thank you. Hi, now I'm with Craig Underwood and we are inside one of his gorgeous, beautiful produce stands. He has two. He has one on 
118 in Somas, and we're here on Sun Valley Road in Moore Park. And um, I wish you could see all these beautiful vegetables and fruit. The colors in here are wonderful, and I can smell so many um, different vegetables as well. How long have you had this produce stand? Well, <clears throat> there was a produce stand here when we started uh, leasing up here in 1994, but it's changed a lot since then. Mm -hmm. And everybody's walking around buying their fresh, locally grown fruits and vegetables. And is most of the fruits and vegetables that we're seeing here, are they all, mostly all gr locally grown? This time of year, they are. <clears throat> In the wintertime, uh, the proportion will change, but probably 80% of what we sell here right now, or maybe higher, is grown right here on the farm. And you can also, I'm seeing a lot of people um, going out into the fields and picking. You can also pick. You can get your fruits and vegetables from the produce stand, but you can also go out and pick your own, which is very special. And um, how, many different how many different crops can you pick here? Well, <clears throat> you can pick just about every kind of vegetable there is, but the most popular crops are <clears throat> strawberries when they're in season. Uh, raspberries are fairly popular. People like to pick... Um, our heirloom tomatoes, which you can see here. We have Roma tomatoes right across the street, and on Labor Day, we open that field up for picking for Romas, and people who want to can or put up their own sauce mm -hmm. for the year will come out and pick. Uh, the most we've ever had picked was 4,000 pounds by one family. 4,000 pounds by one family? How long did that take them? Well, Back in those days, uh, we sometimes had the machine going in the field, so we just ran the machine into the back of their truck, so it didn't take very long at all. <laughs> they, cheated. <laughs> they cheated. They cheated. But currently, I, I think the most that people pick is about 2,000 pounds. But then the whole family comes in for the weekend. They pick on, uh, you know, be, be, because it's Labor Day, they have a long weekend to pick and, and can, and the whole family comes in and helps out. Pick, both picking and preparing. Oh, that is so wonderful, and it's so old school. It's it's uh, yeah. really wonderful to connect with nature and with agriculture. And I'm holding a beautiful, large tomato, and you said this was heirloom. Can you explain what heirloom is to the students? Heirlooms are older varieties that are not currently uh, commercially sold because they don't ship very well. And you can see this one's not particularly pretty. You know, it's got cracks in it. We've got some even uglier tomatoes. If you look here, they're uh, maybe misshapen. They've got creases in them. Um, you know, a little scarring. And um, and if you ship them, they don't ship very far. Mm -hmm. but, but they still but the flavor. The flavor is exceptional. But the heirlooms taste amazing. They're, they they really taste. They're, they're really do. delicious. So that's what it's all about. It's about how they taste, and not so much about how they look. I'm really very, very excited because Craig just told me that I get to take home some melons and a seedless watermelon and some corn, fresh corn on the cob, so that makes me happy. And one last thing, if people want to come or get in contact with Underwood Family Farms, how do they do that? The best thing to do is go on our website, website which is uh, underwoodfamilyfarms.com, and we have all the information there about uh, the... the um, fruits and vegetables when they're in season for picking, about our festival in October, uh, prices, just about everything that you could possibly want to know is on the website. The tours as well that the you offer? tours are on there. Yep. Okay, how, to, how to get in touch with us uh, to reserve a tour. You can also do birthday parties here. So underwoodfamilyfarms.com. So thank you again, Craig, and we appreciate your time today. Thank You're you. Welcome.